Hi folks, it is time for our weekly dose of yoga poses that offer us improved hip mobility. So it won't be a traditional class. However, if you practice these particular yoga postures, you, you will see them in stretching classes as well. They can help facilitate your entire yoga practice. They can facilitate your movement um, in everyday life. And basically when we move better, we feel better. And when we feel better, we're happier. And so it's this beautiful snowballing effect. So I invite you to take this, this brief period of time, 15, 20 minutes is about what it'll take and join me on the mat. And you can add this to a, another yoga class or just have it as a supplemental. So no particular breathing today, no breath work other than we will of course, always feel the breath coming and going. And I've got my my dog's here with me as always. So we begin today in this particular shape. Chloe, I need you to move. Yeah. And we call this, I kind of, I call this 90-90. Uh, so Chloe, you need to move. Good girl. So I've got my right knee forward, my left leg back come to the side to show you a little bit better. So in a lot of yoga practices, especially in ones where we're focusing on the hips, we do something called pigeon pose and it looks like this. And it can be really challenging for a lot of people, especially if you have some um, mobility challenges or perhaps just your bones don't move this way. This is a nice modification for that and it's, it's much more accessible. So as you're coming into the shape of 90-90, if this is sit sitting up here is too much already, you can lean down to reduce some of that, some of that pressure. I'm going to have you begin to lift your right foot up off the floor. We're going to do that about, well, about eight times. And if this is too much, you can come down lower. If you'd like a little bit more, come up a little higher, you'll realize it's a little bit more challenging. So maybe even placing your hand underneath your knee. So we're working on not only our flexibility here, but also on our strength. So that improves our mobility. So we'll do that with the back leg as well, lifting the heel. You'll notice that my back leg is a little bit easier for me. You can do that in coordination with your breath, inhaling and exhaling. And I'll have you sweep over to the other side. So now your opposite leg is internally rotated and you're just simply on the other side. So now my right thigh is internally rotated. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can lift my, my left foot up. It's not very cooperative. So I need to actually come down a little bit. I'm going to stabilize the ankle. I'm lifting through the heel. So I'm projecting the heel up, the knees pointing down, finding a really deep rotation through the hip. And if pigeon pose in yoga class or swan, as we sometimes call it, isn't available to you, this is a nice option. And I'm going to come up and show you the right leg. Again, you can come down, so lifting the heel up, and you'll start to feel that right up in through your hip. So again, not traditional yoga postures, however great poses to modification of our yoga poses to perhaps allow us access into some of those more challenging poses. And I've lost count. So make sure you do even number on each side. <clears throat> Lean back onto the hands and just allow those knees to sway side to side. I do this one a lot with you. Inhale and exhale over to a side. I'm just leaning back here on my hands. Maybe do it from a new angle for you. 
So we'll sway back and forth a few times. Even this can be quite a, a strong sensation. We don't want it to ever hurt the knees. And the next time I come to the right, I'm going to stay here. As you come to the right, extend your left leg forward. So now you're in half, sort of a half butterfly pose. So when we're in full butterfly pose, which is this, you tend to round your back or I seem to. So we'll take it halfway through. So we'll do a half, half butterfly pose, which we often do when we're going into a forward fold, but we're not coming into a forward fold today. Simply allowing the right thigh to come down to the ground. You might even take your left hand to the inner edge of your right thigh and, and kind of rotate that right inner thigh up and the outer thigh down taking good care of noticing where that sensation is in your hip taking a couple more breaths here and then we'll switch sides extend the right leg in front and the left leg will come in so again half half butterfly pose taking that right hand to the inner edge of the thigh left hand to the outer edge not even worrying about folding forward here. Oftentimes we do this again to get into the hamstrings. But right now, just accessing that external rotation up near your hip. So if coming into butterfly pose in its full version is difficult, you might explore coming into a half butterfly pose, one leg at a time. But if you'd like to join me here, I'm going to take a few breaths in full butterfly pose. So what I want you to pay attention to is when you come into full butterfly pose, if you're really rounding here, then maybe come back up into half butterfly pose. Remember, it's always more important to have really great integrity through the spine than it is to come into the full version and have all this junking up. That's my fancy yoga term, junking up. So again, not a traditional practice, but just some ideas here for you to explore. Maybe if you're sitting down watching TV, get down on the floor and, and explore these things. Maybe a couple more breaths in full butterfly pose if you're here. And then helping those knees together coming down onto your back. As you come onto your back, we do this one a lot too, this bridge pose, and to build the strength in your glutes and as well to open up through the front of your hips, bringing the hands down alongside the body. As you press into the floor, broaden across your collarbones. And I want you to I remember when I used to go to a trainer and I would have to put a weight on the front of my hips. So we would do this as well when we were training to help build up that strength in this area. But you can do this by giving some resistance, squeezing the glutes on the way up. So sometimes when I look out into a classroom, I see people kind of just the knees come way out. So maybe they have really over strong um, glutes and they're not using any of the inner thighs. You want to keep energy through your inner thighs here as well. So if you have one of those yoga blocks, this is a great place to utilize it to prevent you from hyper external rotation as you come to bridge. So when I do that, it pinches my back. So notice if it's pinching your back and see if maybe you need a little more energy through your inner thighs. So do this a few more times, pressing, squeezing the glutes as you rise up, keeping the inner thighs relatively parallel. So more of a dynamic bridge pose than we would typically do in class. But this will help your more static bridge in class. Maybe let's come into a more static bridge now by interlacing your hands coming into a little bit more of a traditional yoga pose. We'll stay here for a few breaths. Pressing the arm bones into the floor. Press the feet down into the floor. Maybe shift your rib cage a little bit more towards your chin. 
Notice that difference. That's different than bringing your chin into your chest. So shift your rib cage towards your chin. Back of the neck is free, of course. And although I look to see if the camera is working, you're not going to look side to side here. And we'll release all that down and draw the right knee into the chest. Use, utilize your abdominals as you lower that down and utilize the abdominals as you draw your left knee up. And we do this a lot too as we're transitioning in our yoga class. So you can make it yoga by feeling into the breath, being present in the sensations of the moment. Yoga, of course, means union. So running can be yoga in my book. Painting, anything that brings you completely into the moment, that ever-present moment where you can't even seem like there is any time. It just doesn't, time doesn't seem to exist when you're in that state of yoga. So let's release the feet down. Make sure that they're, again, about hip width apart. We'll take the left foot on the right thigh. You could do the opposite foot first. It doesn't matter to me today. And gently ease the left knee away from your body. Be staying here for maybe five to seven breaths. Make sure your chin isn't way up here and you're crunching the back of your neck. Feel nice and spacious through the throat area, both through the front and the back of the neck. Feeling spacious. So you'll notice again that external rotation that we're feeling here, but in a more passive stretch than what we did on the floor. We were actively lifting our heel away. And of course, if you ever have ongoing hip issues, it's never a bad idea to get, I'm just going to rotate here, get assessed by a physiotherapist, right? And they can give you specific exercises for you. Find your breath. And release that down. We'll take the left foot on the right thigh once again. And just ask perhaps a little bit more. You might just repeat this. You might draw that right heel up off the ground. If you're near a wall, you can do this on a wall. I'm going to do it by holding my right thigh, but you can always use a wall as your prop. I'm feeling into the aspect of the outer left hip. So I've had the fortunate experience of working in the field of rehab for the last mm, a long time, about 25 years, almost as about as long as I've been in yoga, not been in yoga, but pract started practicing yoga. So I've had the great opportunity to meet some great healers along the way, healers in terms of medical professionals in this, in this sense, in terms of physiotherapists and OTs, and gleaned a lot of information along the way and seen how so many of our yoga poses sort of double up and as rehab postures. So it's very interesting. We'll release that down. Slide that foot off and take the right foot onto the thigh. Again, you can utilize the wall or you can hold the back of the left thigh. I'm not sure if my head is in this, but it doesn't matter. Hopefully you can see my legs. And as you release that down, we'll come into left leg extended down along the floor and the right leg opening up. So this is similar to what we did when we were sitting. So remember, we were in this shape when we were sitting. 
And now we're coming into the shape reclined. You'll notice that this is also the shape that we hold when we're in our standing balance pose of tree. So my right foot is coming towards my inner left thigh. It's a deep external rotation of my right hip. So if balancing sometimes prevents you from accessing that external hip rotation, you can come into this and then you can facilitate the balance and the focus on balancing maybe a little bit easier when you are standing in your yoga practice. And we'll switch sides. Lengthening the right leg, draw the left foot to the inner right thigh and rotate that knee open. We'll take about five to seven breaths here, nice and long and slow. and draw that leg back up to center. Let's bring the other foot up beside it. This time we'll walk our knees in and our feet out. So internal rotation of our hips, I'm kind of resting here. You'll notice that I do this quite a bit in classes too. Very similar to what we did on the floor, right? With this movement and trying to lift up our heel. It's that same movement except this is a little stronger. So you can come into it in this shape. Actually, this feels a little bit stronger for me today because both of them are doing it and feel it really seeing out here through my hips. And let my knees open up. Begin to draw the soles of the feet together, coming into reclined full butterfly pose. Scooch down here so I'm a little bit closer. And let's place our hands on our bellies. If this is too much, you can hold under your thighs or place blocks here, of course. And see if you can walk your shoulder blades under just a little bit more. This is a beautiful restorative pose too. If you place blocks underneath our knees and perhaps prop our spine up on a bolster to open up the tissue in our chest. But right now the focus is on our hips. So let's focus on that sensation. Call this our trunk and we often have a lot of junk in our trunk, a lot of emotional junk, a lot of there's stuff that we seem to store down there. And if this ever makes you feel vulnerable, you can always place a blanket over top and even that extra weight helps to reduce that anxiety or sense of vulnerability and you're in this shape, either in at home or even in a class when we're able to meet each other in a public space again for a yoga class. Begin to assist your thighs closer together. Plant the feet about parallel hip distance apart once again. And I'm just going to release my arms down along the floor and just find a little bit of pelvic tilt anterior and posterior just to release some touch in there. And we're almost done here. So I invite you to draw your right knee up and kind of circle it in that hip socket. You can help it along if you like. You can do that a few times. And come back and switch sides. Draw the left knee up and circle it in the socket. My dog is looking at me, hoping that I will get her down off of the sofa. So if you hear any whimpering, that's what it is. Oftentimes I edit that stuff out. You're fine, Coco. 
you're fine. And just take a moment here, extend your feet to the corners of the mat. Take your arms out wide, walk the shoulder blades under, open up across your chest. Take a deep breath in through the nose and exhale through the mouth. See if you can sort of feel any sense of vibration or already like things are flowing a little better in your hip pelvic area. Do that again. Inhale through the nose. Inflate, 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 and exhale through the mouth. And one more time. Inhale, inflate, inflate, inflate. And exhale. Rest here as long as you like. And when you're ready, make yourselves, take yourselves up to see it and just see if you notice that everything feels a little looser in your hips and in your pelvic area, maybe in your low back area even as well. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for this little brief hip release and I hope to see you soon. Remember to hit subscribe if you like what I offer. That way you won't have to go looking for me. It will populate on your screen if you in your subscription boxes and it's all free. Thanks. Have a great day.